Hello and welcome. Today we're looking at the density of materials and what we have here is a photograph of a bunch of metal blocks. So these are all different types of metal but what you might notice about them is that they all look like they're the same size. We call these density blocks. Okay if you have some in school it might be worth um, having a, a little play with those because they are quite interesting. But what's the, what's the same about all of these is they have exactly the same volume. They all have the same volume, but their masses are different. So if we were to put them each one of those on a balance or a, or a scale, we would see that have a different mass. So I've done that for the first one over here. The first one is tin, put it on the measuring scale, on the balance, and we saw, or I saw that it has a mass of 63.3 grams. We could do that with the rest of them as well. And you can see that even though the volume of each of those blocks is exactly the same, the masses are different. And in fact, it's quite interesting to see that if you look at something like aluminium and compare that, that's the one with the least mass. If you compare that one with the one that has the most mass, which is the lead, you can see that the aluminium almost has, it almost has four times less mass than the lead. And when you hold those two in your hand, it is quite strange to think that these both, both these metals have such a difference in mass for the same size. Now, what we call this feature when we have different masses for the same volume is we say that they have different densities. The densities are all different for each of these different metals. And we can work out the density using, the, using an equation. So our equation looks a little something like this. Density is mass divided by volume. And this is an equation, unfortunately, you have to know and remember. But this is, the, this is the equation, it's not too difficult. The letters for each of the different parts are there. So density is in this Greek letter, actually it's not D, it's a Greek letter called Rho, I think it's spelled R-H-O, like that. But that's density and that's measured in kilograms per meter cubed. Kilograms per meter cubed. The mass is in kilograms and the volume would therefore be in meters cubed. Okay, and now if you look in the spec, you might see it written as the equation I've got right at the bottom there, but you won't be given this in the exam. You do need to remember it. If you don't feel confident rearranging equations, you can remember the formula triangle, which looks like that. And that's like a, that's like a little hack to help us rearrange equations if we need to. And we're going to use that a little bit later on. Okay, so that's our equation. But before we do any practice equations or practice questions, we need to be able to explain the difference in densities of solids, liquids and gases and explain that in terms of the arrangement of the particles. So here is the particles in a solid, the middle one shows the particles in a liquid and the one on the right shows particles in a gas. Now the most important thing to remember for our solid in terms of density is that the particles are very tightly packed together. In a liquid we could say they're loosely packed so they're, they're still uh, quite close to each other, but they're more loosely packed than in a solid. That means they must be further apart. So particles in a liquid are further apart than they would be in a solid. That means that as a result of that, the liquid is going to be less dense because there are less particles in the same volume. If you had the same volume of a liquid and of a solid in the liquid, the particles would be there will be less particles in the same volume. For a gas, the particles, as you can see, are far apart, but in fact, they are very far apart, which again means the density is going to be very low for gases. So solids are the most dense and gases are the least dense. But remember also, just because solids are the most dense, that doesn't mean to say they all have the same density. The density of solids can also vary between one type of solid and another, and you saw that when we looked at the different uh, density blocks over here. They all had different masses for the same volume, therefore they had different densities. Okay, so you should be able to explain densities in terms of arrangement of particles in solids, in liquids, and in gases. And those, and, and you can do that by looking at the notes that we've got on this page here. Okay, so that helps you to explain that. What we can do now for the last few minutes is have a go at a few questions. So We've got two questions here on the left-hand side, so it might be worth pausing here and having a go at those to see how you get on with that. Um, I should add, actually, that we're going to work in grams per centimetres cubed for all these questions, not kilograms per metres cubed. Okay, so pause here and give these a go. 
So for the first one, density is mass over volume. It's quite straightforward. 125 is the mass, 27 is the volume. That gives us an answer of 4.62 grams per centimeters cubed. So that's quite a straightforward one. The next one is slightly trickier because we have to do two levels of calculation and we want our answer to three significant figures, which I've just added on there. Okay, so our mass is 429 and we need to divide that by the volume, but we don't have the volume, we have the length of one side. And remember, it's a cube. So if one side is four centimeters, all the sides are four centimeters. So the volume is length times width times height. So that would be four times four times four, or another way to say that it's four cubed. And that gives us an answer of 64 centimeters cubed. So there's our volume. We can put that on the bottom of our equation like that, 64. Uh, let me just move that over a bit so we've got a bit more space. There we go. Now the number we get when we put that into the calculator is quite long. It's 6.703125. Now the question says we want the answer to three significant figures. So the way we would do that is take the first three numbers like so. We would need to look at the number after the zero. And that is less than five, so we wouldn't do any rounding. We would just call this 6.70, and it's a density, so it's grams per centimeters cubed. Okay, so there's the two answers for those uh, first few questions there. We've got one more question to do. This one is, again, slightly trickier, probably a middle level of difficulty in terms of the whole physics GCSE. But what we have is the density of a cube is 8.8 .8 grams per centimeters cubed. The length of one side of the cube is two centimeters. Which one or which of the above metals is this cube most likely to be? So which one of the above? Well, the only way we can tell or identify each of those is by the mass. And we have all the masses for the different cubes. So there's the mass in grams. So if we work out the mass of this cube, we should be able to identify it. We have the density and the length of one side. You might want to use the formula triangle here because we're going to work out the mass but if you feel confident rearranging, that's fine. Mass is density times volume, so the density is 8.8 .8 .8 grams per centimeters cubed, given in the question. We multiply that by the volume, but we only have the length of one side. But remember, we just do that by two cubed, or length times width times height, which is two times two times two, which is eight. So 8.8 .8 times eight, and that gives us an answer of 70.4 grams. Remember, it's a mass. So it's grams. Which one of those metals is it going to be? Well, the closest one there is copper. Now, our value is not exactly 70.34, but the question does say which one is it most likely to be, and all the others are very far away from 70.4. Okay, so there we have it. Density, what we mean by it, you should be able to talk about the difference in particle arrangement between solid, liquid, and gases. And here's a few exam questions or exam type questions that could help you along. Okay, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.